Hi there, and welcome to the sixth episode on SRE and DevOps. My name is Seth, and I'm a developer advocate at Google focused on infrastructure and operations. And hi, I'm Liz, a site reliability engineer, or SRE at Google, where I teach Google Cloud customers how to build and operate reliable services. So Seth, I have an error budget now, and it's based on the level of reliability that my customers expect, but I don't want to have to wait months to find out whether or not I'm going to meet my error budget. Definitely, collecting all of that data can be time consuming. That's why you need a risk analysis. A risk what? An analysis of what items or risks that might cause you to not meet your SLO. I see, yeah, I know all the ways that my system has failed in the past, and I can think of many different ways that my system might fail in the future, but how does that help me figure out if my error budget is realistic? So you need to figure out how often each failure is likely to happen and how severe it'll be if and when it happens. I see, but that still doesn't help me compare the impact on my error budget. How do I know if a high severity but infrequent form of outage is better or worse than a frequent but low level degree of degradation? Right, so that's actually the secret. You just have to multiply those metrics together. Here, let me show you. Tell me about one of your common incidents or failure modes that you're worried about. So for example, I have a primary database that I have to back up every month, and it takes the entire database down for two hours every single time. So that means that your time between failures is roughly 30 days every month, and that your impact duration is 120 minutes. It also impacts your entire user base, since during that time the entire system is offline. That makes sense. So that means you'd have about 120 minutes times 12 months times 100% of your user base, which is about 1,440 bad minutes per year. And my error budget says that I'm supposed to achieve two and a half nines, or 99.5% reliability over the year, meaning that I can have about 2,600 bad minutes per year. Right, so that means your monthly database downtime is consuming half of your error budget. But I'm sure that's not the only kind of downtime you're seeing. No, as an example, every couple of weeks, people complain that the system is slow on Friday afternoons because everyone is trying to build and test their code before they go home for the weekend. Yeah, that happens in like every software development shop. So it's so slow that it causes half of our users to be unhappy with us. And what's worse is it takes us half an hour for the support tickets to come in and then half an hour to actually provision more capacity. So that is probably not very good, right? Yeah, so if I were to put this into the same framework, I'd say that this is a 60 minute outage, 30 minutes to detect and 30 minutes to resolve, times 26 times per year, affecting about half of your user base. And that's 780 bad minutes per year. Right, so this outage would wind up being about half as bad as the database backup downtime. So that makes a lot of sense. Great, so we can fill out these calculations together for any other sources of outages that you'd like to catalog. Great, I'll get right to it. Okay, whew. now I'm done with that. So now that you've compiled all of the risk data, we can sort the outages by the number of bad minutes per year. Indeed, as we suspected, the monthly database outage is consuming the majority of your error budget. Combined with these other small sources of outages, it's clear that you're going to exceed your error budget. That's not really good. Well, but it's not all bad news. Since we've gathered our estimates and quantified this data, we can find out what things will bring us back under the error budget. For instance, anything that consumes about 25% of the error budget or more is something that we want to address. That makes sense. And if I address all of the large risks and I still wind up exceeding my error budget, what do I do then? So then you need to pick a combination of risks to address that will bring you within the budget, not necessarily all of the largest ones. Right, because some of the larger risks I can't necessarily address without rewriting the whole system. That'll take time. So you're saying that if I accumulate enough of these smaller things and fix them, that'll potentially bring me back within my error budget. Right, so now you have a plan for how to estimate risk and a way to create plans to stay within your error budget. Alternatively, if there's no way to mitigate all of that risk, you now have numerical evidence to go back to your key stakeholders to revisit the possibility of a different SLO that would give you a larger error budget. Thanks, Seth. And thanks to everyone for watching this episode. Hopefully this is helpful for teams trying to put DevOps into practice through SRE techniques. I'm really excited to figure out how to set up effective alerts for our service so we can know whether we're in danger of violating our SLOs on the next episode. Hey Liz, what's that button down there? Oh, that's the like button. You should press it if you enjoyed this. And, and this one over here? That's the subscribe button so you can find out when we post our next episode.